So now we have naive T cells circulating in the blood. They've left the thymus. They're either CD4 positive or CD8 positive, uh, and they're in the bloodstream. So where do T cells go to check for a matching antigen that matches, that matches their T cell receptor? Well, they're going to go to the lymph node or some secondary lymphoid tissue in order to find a matching antigen for their antigen receptor. So this could be the lymph node, it could be one of the BALT, bronchial-associated lymphoid tissues, the GALT, the gastrointestinal-associated lymphoid tissues, or the MALT, the um, mucosal-associated lymphoid tissues. That's where naive T cells will encounter their antigen for the first time, if they ever encounter an antigen at all. So, but typically infections don't start in lymph nodes, infections start in tissues, in skin, in the respiratory tract, the GI tract, and that's where you have viral infections and bacterial infections. So somehow this infection, this pathogen, has to get um, shuttled into lymph nodes where the, these, this pathogen can be presented to T cells. So how do uh, pathogens and their antigens get sent into the lymph nodes? So here's a virally infected tissue, for example. Now, we want the T cells to come and clear this, but before that happens, the T cells need to activate, and that's going to happen in the lymph nodes. So in tissues, you have to remember that there are um, phagocytic cells called macrophages and dendritic cells. They are both phagocytes. You find them both in tissues. The, they have receptors on their surface that will bind to and recognize pathogens. Um, they will internalize pathogens via receptor-mediated endocytosis, or sometimes uh, macropenocytosis or micropenocytosis, all the other mechanisms by which cells can take in substances that are in the extracellular fluid. Now, the, uh, the dendritic cells can also become infected by a pathogen, so they can carry a pathogen in their cytoplasm or in their vesicles. And this is key for presenting to either MHC1 or MHC2 on, on MHC1 or 2 molecules. The difference between macrophages and dendritic cells that you find in your tissues is that macrophages are resident phagocytes. They stay there, they work there. Their job is to clear the infection as best they can in the tissues. Dendritic cells, their purpose is not to, or their main function is not to perform phagocytosis to try to clear the pathogen. They take the pathogen in via receptor mediated endocytosis or phagocytosis or penocytosis or infection, and they migrate into the lymphatic system where they present to T cells. So we gotta put a lymphatic system in here. So there's a lymph vessel and a lymph node. So this is a secondary lymphoid tissue. It could also be a BALT or MALT or GALT, some other lymphoid tissue. And this is where the dendritic cells will migrate or travel to in order to present antigen to T cells. How do uh, uh, dendritic cells know where to go? Well, when they are in the tissues, we typically refer to them as immature dendritic cells. Um, and they have on their surface a receptor called CCR7. Uh, it is a chemokine receptor. In the um, lymph node or lymphoid tissues, there are stromal cells which release a cytokine called, or a chemokine called CCL21. So dendritic cells, once they um, have encountered a pathogen, they turn on this receptor CCR7 and the dendritic cells enter the lymphatic system. They enter the lymph vessel and they migrate to the source of the cytokine, CCL21. And so now the dendritic cells are becoming activated. So they are traveling into the lymphatic tissue, the lymph node, and that's where they're going to present antigen to naive T cells. So here are come naive T cells. Naive T cells are um, swimming by in the circulatory system. They encounter a vessel called a high endothelial venule, which allows the T cells access to the lymph node. And in fact, T cells have on their surface the chemokine receptor CCR7, which will also bind CCL21. So they know to be attracted to the lymph tissues. There are other uh, adhesion molecules that T cells use to find lymph nodes. We're not gonna go into those, don't worry about that. But now we have a T cell, a naive T cell. It could be CD4, it could be CD8 positive, 
it's entered the lymph node, we've got a dendritic cell. This dendritic cell has migrated from the infected, inflamed tissues. It's now in the lymph node, and it's going to start presenting antigen on its MHC1s and it's on the MHC2s. It's going to present it to naive T cells to see if the T cells have a matching T cell receptor. So that's one cell in the lymph node that presents to T cells, and this is called, again, the dendritic cells, if you recall, are professional antigen presenting cells. They will present antigens to naive T cells. Um, some other way that antigen can be presented to T cells is that pathogens themselves, or proteins made by pathogens, can get drained into lymph um, fluid into the lymphatic system on their own. So here's a pathogen, a virus, it's maybe it's virus particles or virus proteins are being drained from the infected tissue into the lymph node. And now that they're into the lymph node, what's going to happen to them? Well, they can be taken up by resident phagocytes. So there are phagocytes that live in your lymph nodes, both macrophages and dendritic cells. So these, where do these come from? They're just there on their own. So lymph, uh, lymph tissue, lymph nodes have macrophages and dendritic cells already in them. So some dendritic cells travel into the lymph nodes, some dendritic cells are already in the lymph nodes, and macrophages also in the lymph nodes. What are the purpose of these phagocytes? They will phagocytose the pathogen and present it to T cells. Again, they are professional antigen presenting cells. So dendritic cells can travel here or dendritic cells are already here. Either way, they can take a pathogen and present it to T cells. There is a third professional antigen presenting cell in the lymph node. If you recall, B cells are professional antigen presenting cells. So B cells are using their B cell receptor, also known as B immunoglobulin, to try to bind uh, the pathogen. And maybe one naive B cell binds the virus particle, and what's going to happen then is the pathogen will be internalized and presented to T cells on MHG class two molecules. And so we'll get to that in the later video. But this video is just going over the concept of how naive T cells are exposed to pathogens, specifically the peptides that are being presented to them. So naive T cells are exposed in lymph tissue. And how are pathogens getting in here? Many different ways, drainage in the lymph fluid or being carried by migratory dendritic cells.